Well, you know, for the last eight, nine, ten years, I have been announcing our graduates, but we are changing. I am actually handing over my my reins to. No, she said, "Don't tell them I'm the youth pastor." Nothing, though. No. <laughs> Amen. No, I'm actually turning over because Pastor Charles has me moving in a different direction, but. I could have just let her come up here and do it, but I thought I wanted to kind of introduce her because y'all know, know Sister Nita and how smart she is and all the things, the accomplishments that she's made. But, hey, amen, you can put your hands together for her. So Pastor Charles is putting out her work because she's not just going to sit there and be a pew warmer because she has too much to offer to our young adults, uh, to our teenagers. So put, our hand, put your hands together for Sister Nita Easterwood. Thank you for that introduction, Brother Danny. I'm here, I have the honor of introducing uh, the graduates for 2019. And can we give Brother Danny a round of applause? Because first Pastor Charles was my youth pastor and then it transitioned to Pastor Danny. So just to be here to see yet another transition is definitely a blessing. So, you know, my generation, we see that we have a responsibility in the church. And like he mentioned, I'm not going to be the only one that's being called out. So just be ready. Pretty soon, everyone is going to be up here behind this pulpit. So just get yourself in order. Um, okay, like I mentioned, I have the honor of introducing the class of 2019. So when you hear your child's name being mentioned, I'm going to ask that the parents also stand because you deserve to be honored too. They didn't do this on their own, okay? All right. So first, we are going to start with the high school graduates. Christopher Hurd. Okay. Christopher Hurd is the son of Crystal Hurd and is graduating from the Wyandotte High School and will be attending, oh, we have some Bulldogs in the audience and will be attending the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, majoring in music technology and music education. Congratulations, Christopher. <laughs> Taylor Hervey. Taylor Hervey is the daughter of Angel Hervey and is graduating from Bonner Springs High School and will be attending Johnson County Community College majoring in so social psychology. She's a committed worker and volleyball player. She was an active member of Peer Helper, Diversity Leadership Club, and Key Club. She really enjoys working with the special needs kids and helping them as much as she can. Congratulations, Taylor. LaJay Judy. LaJay is the daughter of Stephanie Judy and is graduating early from the Fairfax Learning Center where she scored the highest ACT score in her graduating class. She plans to attend Kansas City, Kansas Community College majoring in business communication. Congratulations, LaJay. La Jelena Kelsey. Jelena is the daughter of Christopher and Takesha Kelsey and is graduating from North Kansas City High School where she was a member of the National Honor Society Honor Roll and in 2016, she was a four by 400 meter state qualifier and set the school, high school record. And then in 2017, she was the 400 meter conference champion. And from 2016 to 2018, she was a basketball defense player of the year. And in 2019, won the state basketball championship for the first time in school history. She plans to attend Missouri Western with a full scholarship from track, majoring in pre-med. You go, girl. Congratulations, Julia. Brandon, 
Brennan Long. Brennan is the son of Martino and Bridget Locke and is graduating from Washington High School. He plans to attend the University of Arkansas at Pine Bluff, Pine Bluff majoring in music with an emphasis in sound recording technology. Earlier in his life, Brennan was serious about basketball. basketball. He was typically the smallest on the court, but was often among the quickest and surprised people with his level of confidence and skill. Once he discovered music, sports took a back seat, and over the years, Brennan has played violin, trumpet, trombone, drums, and French horn. The scripture that Brennan often most recites, especially during difficult times, is Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Congratulations, Brennan. Isaiah Lumpkins. Isaiah is the son of Gary and Crystal Lumpkins, who graduated from the Mill Valley High School. He received his letter for, for track in the Jim Osborne Scholarship. He plans to attend Kansas City, Kansas Community College and study multimedia. Congratulations, Isaiah. <laughs> Michaela Rush. Michaela is the daughter of Marcus and Lisa Rush and graduated from the Mays Virtual Preparatory School where she was the president of student council and earned a 4.0 GPA her senior year. She plans to attend Mid-America Nazarene University to study computer science. Congratulations, Michaela. All right, now we are transitioning to those who are receiving their bachelor's degree. And the first uh, one I will name is not here, but we're still gonna honor him. Uh, Keaton Cofield. <laughs> Keaton Cofield is the son of Pastor Charles and First Lady Joy Cofield. <laughs> Kennedy, you stood up too? She said I had a part in this as well. <laughs> he graduated from Wichita State University with a bachelor's of science in athletic training where, no, 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 wrong one, sorry, I skipped down. He's, he graduated from Washburn University with a bachelor's of art in kinesiology with an emphasis in sports management and a ma minor in business. So congratulations to Keaton. Ladeja Holland. Ladeja is the daughter of Christopher and Takesha Kelsey and graduated from Wichita State University with a Bachelor's of Science in Athletic Training. She was a member of the National Society of Collegiate Scholars, WSU Diversity Inclusion Member, a Kaufman Scholar, a Dean's List, and a recipient of the Martin Luther King Jr. Scholarship. Congratulations, Ladeja. Miranda Watson. Miranda is the daughter of Randall Watson and Michaela Grisby and graduated from Kansas State University, go Wildcats, with a Bachelor's of Science in Communication Studies. Miranda is a member of the Kaufman Scholars Program, National, National Honorary Society of Collegiate Scholars, and a Snyder Leadership Legacy Fellow. One of her favorite scriptures is 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Congratulations, Miranda. And now we are transitioning once more to our master's degrees. Philip Brown. Philip Brown graduated from the University of Missouri, Kansas City, where he received a Master of Science in Civil Engineering. One of his favorite scriptures is Job 38.4, where you were when I, 
where you were when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you know so much. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me if you know so much. It's pretty deep, pretty deep. Congratulations, Philip. All right, and the mother to one of our graduates, Bridget Locke. Bridget graduated from Park University, where she received her Master's of Arts in Communication and Leadership. Bridget's favorite scripture is Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Speaking of the future, Bridget is praying about pursuing her PhD in a few years. In the meantime, in the meantime, she is using her education and experience to impact internal communication strategies and culture at Park University as their Director of Strategic Communications. Congratulations, Sister Bridget. And we are transitioning yet once again to our doctorate degree. Last but not least, Dr. Andrea Seahorn. <laughs> take your time, take your time, it's worth it. Dr. Seahorn graduated from William Woods University, where she received her doctorate of education with an emphasis in school leadership and was recognized for the dissertation of the year. She began her career at the age of 16 as an after-school reading tutor at the W.E.B. Du Bois Learning Center in Kansas City, Missouri, and has been in the field of ed education for nearly 25 years in various capacities as classroom teacher, library media specialist, instructional coach, assistant principal, principal, and now as a school district administrator. Her favorite scripture is Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own and understanding. But in all your ways, what? Acknowledge him and he will what? Direct your path. Congratulations, Dr. Seahorn. Can we please congratulate the class of 2019? And very briefly, graduates, I'm not, I'm not the speaker on the day, so I'm going to be very brief, but I do want to say something. Um, what you have achieved is a big deal, okay? Whether it has been high school, whether it has been college, bachelor's, doctorate, whatever it is, it is a big deal, and it should be celebrated. But at the same time, you want to make note and make no mistakes about who has kept you through it all. And I want to reiterate uh, Sister uh, Bridget's favorite verse, Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, and plans to give you hope in a future. And I say that because you may be thinking about where you are, and you're like, I didn't get here, I'm not perfect, but you made it, and maybe you're nervous about your next steps in life, and that's okay, because no one has it figured out. If you're not going to the perfect job, if you're not going to the perfect school, first of all, those don't exist. But just know that you are exactly where you are supposed to be. And also take comfort in knowing that there is no mistake that you can make that's big enough for God to change his mind about you or your purpose or your path. And so I think about like where I am today. And the longer I go and the more I achieve, the more undeserving I feel. Not because I haven't worked hard and not because you haven't worked hard. But I recognize that if it hasn't been for God's grace if it hasn't been for his purpose or even for my parents' prayers, for my family's prayers, I wouldn't be where I am today. So just remember that when it, wherever you're going, that your goals, God's dreams and, and visions for you are 10 times bigger and that you can do it and you, you're going to take it one step at a time. And anytime that you feel weak, you have an entire community here to pick you up. Congratulations, graduates. <laughs>
Give him another hand, amen. Amen. Thank God for the service thus far. I am here to introduce our speaker for the day, amen. And once again, congratulations to all of the graduates. Uh, I am introducing a person that I've known for quite some time now. Uh, my wife, Andrea Jolie Dixon Seahorn, Dr. Let me start over. Amen. I'm going to read her bio, then I'm going to just speak a couple of words, and then uh, we'll be in the hands of the speaker. Dr. Andrea Dixon Seahorn is a native of Kansas City, Missouri, and an educator of nearly 25 years. She received her undergraduate education at the University of Missouri, Kansas City, where she earned dual degrees in elementary education and liberal arts. After teaching for one year, Andrea pursued full-time graduate study at the University of Missouri-Columbia as a Thurgood Marshall Fellow where she obtained a master's degree in library science. 
Uh, I found out that libraries make good money, and by the way, I just wanted to throw that in there. I was shocked how much librarians make. Amen. Uh, she also gained professional experience uh, as a school library and media specialist in the Kansas City Public Schools and Richmond Public Schools in Richmond, Virginia. She also fulfilled the roles as education coordinator at the American Jazz Museum in the historic 18th and Vine Jazz District and school to work coordinator with the Home Builders Association of Greater Kansas City. Afterwards, Andrea embarked upon school leadership at Northwest Missouri State University, which led to her experiences as an assistant principal at both elementary and middle school levels and later became an elementary school principal in the Kansas City Public Schools. After her tenure as a principal, she served as a special consultant for the Office of Educator Quality with the Missouri Department of Elementary and Secondary Education and now serves as a district administrator at Liberty Public Schools. She recently earned her Doctorate of Education and Leadership degree at the William Woods University in Fulton, Missouri with special recognition for dissertation of the year. Also, uh, just as a tagline, she's an author as well. Uh, she's the author of She Wears It Well, which is 12 Essential Qualities of God's Contemporary Woman, which was self-published in 2010. Amen. So what would I like to say about my jewel? Amen. Thank God for her. Uh, I, I know that she loves education. I know that uh, she is passionate, amen, about learning. I know that she's passionate about God. I know that she loves this church, amen. She loves this ministry uh, as she serves in uh, a couple of capacities. Uh, and I know that when it comes to education, uh, she understands and she is a, a, a demonstration, amen, and an example uh, that education, amen, can help take you where you want to go in life. Uh, so at this time, I would like to introduce to some, amen, and to others, I would like to, I forget the other part, but Andrea present, yes, Andrea Dixon Seahorn, amen, the doctor, amen. Amen. Isn't she lovely? Isn't she wonderful? Good morning, Kansas City Community Church. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. You all don't realize this thing is hot and this hat is heavy, but we're going to do this today with the Lord's help. Amen. I want to thank my husband for uh, that very nice and sweet introduction. And I also want to thank our pastor and first lady for giving me the opportunity to be before you today. Give them a round of applause. We honor you today. And I don't take this lightly that you have uh, bestowed upon me this honor to, to address the graduates. Amen. I remember it was 30 years ago, and I had this epiphany this weekend. 30 years ago that I was sitting in your seat as a high school graduate. Amen? 30 years ago. And I look back and say, look what the Lord has done. I could almost break out in a song, but I'm not, because this hat is heavy and this is hot. Amen? But look what the Lord has done. And he assures us in his word that he will do great and mighty things on our behalf. Amen. And so on today, I just want to speak very briefly about getting positioned for good success. Positioned for good success. Say that word with me, those two words, good success. And this is for the graduates, so with me being an educator, you get to participate. So I'm going to need you to sit up and get on the edge of your seat because we're expecting God to do something beautiful this morning, uh, to be a blessing to all of you, but in particular the graduates. So let's just open up first in prayer. Amen. You should just bow your heads and your hearts. 
Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this day. And, Lord, we don't take it lightly that you've given us breath. You've given us the use of our limbs. You've given us, oh God, the activity, oh God, of our minds, oh God. And Father, we just thank you for each and every graduate that's here today and their family that is gathered to celebrate with them. Even me, Lord, I have a friend from high school that wanted to join uh, us today in service, and I thank you for her. But Lord, we just thank you that along the journey, you've been there to lead and to guide us, oh God, into all truth, Lord. We thank you for the word that will go forth today. I ask, oh God, <clears throat> pardon me, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart, that it will be acceptable in your sight. Oh, Lord, my rock, my redeemer, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. As I was taking a shower this morning, a song came to mind. I'm not going to sing it, but I am going to just share with you a few of the lyrics. <laughs> and how many of you remember Andre Crouch's song, To God Be the Glory? Mm-hmm. When I was a youth in the children's choir, that was uh, one of the songs uh, that we would sing just as a remembrance of what God has done and how great he is in our lives. And the lyrics go, how can I say thanks for the things you've done for me? Things so undeserved, yet you gave to prove your love for me. The voices of a million angels could not express my gratitude. All that I am, and ever hope to be, I owe it all to thee. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. To God be the glory for the things he has done. This is my favorite part. With his blood, he has saved me. With his power, he has raised me. To God be the glory for the things he has done. Just let me live my life and let it be pleasing, Lord, to thee. And if I gain any praise, let it go to Calvary. Amen? So uh, if you just ever want to know how that song sounds, just look it up on YouTube. It'll take you way back. And those of you that, that were, uh, you know, there in that time, in that moment when that song came out and it was very popular, you know what I mean. It was a beautiful, beautiful song and its title is My Tribute, amen? And so that's my tribute to, to God the Father on today for the journey he's led me on to this place. And I can think of no better place to be and celebrate commencement. All of us were at music halls and auditoriums for a commencement celebration, but to me, this is the most important place to be right here with my church family, being celebrated and honored for this achievement, amen? Yeah, clap your hands. Amen. It was blood, sweat, tears, and prayers. Amen. So position for success. So we, when we think about good success, what do we mean? Good success means prospering God's way. In this world, uh, people want to be successful for many reasons, and they go about many ways to achieve that success. But if God's not in it, it's no success at all. And so I'm going to share with you two bookend scriptures. So uh, we'll come back to these at the end. But the first one is Joshua 1 and 8. Very familiar passage of scripture that reads, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it. How long? Day and night. That you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. And then here's the tagline. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. There's another scripture that speaks to success. Again, these are our bookend scriptures, just to get us going. In Proverbs 3 and 6, in the Living Bible, it reads, and this is the paraphrase version. And I love this version of the Bible because it reminds me of my great Aunt Ruth. And it's like she's sitting at the table sharing her wisdom with me. And it reads, in everything you do, put God first, and he will direct you and crown your efforts with success. So how do we position ourselves for good success? I want you to think about that for a moment. I believe, based on the word of God, it's with intentionality and it's with strategic focus. And I'm going to share with you today what I believe are four essential components 
that you need working in your favor in order to achieve good success. Amen? So the first one is really obvious. And First Lady ministered on this uh, as one of the key principles during her uh, Mother's Day message, which was a beautiful message to us as women of God. And so the first essential component, if you're going to have good success, is prayer, right? And prayer is simply making your requests known. In other words, it's the ask principle. When you go to Matthew 7, verses 7 through 11, you'll see it starts out with ask, and it will be given. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be open. And coincidentally, ask starts with A. Seek starts with S. Knock starts with K. Just ask. That's what prayer is about. So when that, someone asks you, well, what does it mean to really pray? Just ask. Say that with me one more time. Just ask. God says in his word in Jeremiah 33 and 3, and this is the amplified version, call to me and I will answer you and show you great and mighty things that are fenced in, hidden, which you do not know, that you do not distinguish, recognize, have knowledge of, or understand. Again, you cannot find these things out unless you just, just ask, all right? Here's another one, Philippians 4, 6 and 7. This is from the New King James Version. Be anxious for nothing. I like the way um, a sis, uh, Sister Easter, what I call her little sister, uh, she was talking about you may be a little nervous about where you go from here. But the word says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Here we go. Let your request be made known to God. And then what happens? The peace of God that passes all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. So in other words, Prayer is a call and response. We know that in uh, African culture, the drums were about calling, and then there was a response. Prayer is call and response. It's an exercise of petition, ask, and then listen, wait for God to speak. All right? And so one of my favorite authors, Dr. Miles Monroe, described prayer as this. Prayer is communion. And it is communication with God that touches his heart. That comes from his book, Understanding the Purpose and Power of Prayer. So essential component number one is prayer. All right, essential component number two, purpose. Purpose is really about you accepting the divine assignment that God has given you. All of you had some kind of description of where you go from here, what you want to study, and uh, I'm going to give you a news flash. You might go to the university thinking you're going to focus on one thing and got to flip the script on you in the midst and say, no, but I really want you to do this. And then when he does that to you, because he did it to me, accept the assignment. So this is what the word speaks to us about purpose in Isaiah 55 and 11. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please and purpose, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So if you're going to have good success, you got to find out your purpose. You got to get a word from God on what that is. And then you've got to endeavor to please him in fulfilling that purpose. In other words, Purpose is about walking worthy of the calling for which you've been called. And the only way you're going to know the calling is you've got to just, just ask. Amen? Here's another one, Romans 8, 28. I love this scripture. It reads, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God. That's us, right? And to those who are called according to his purpose. My purpose? His purpose. First ladies with me. His purpose. Okay? Dr. Miles Monroe says something about purpose. You too have purpose set forth by God. And the skills, talents, abilities, characteristics, 
In other words, everything that makes you who you are, that enables you to fulfill his plan. And your responsibility is to discover what God has designed you to do and how he planned that you would accomplish it. And that comes from his book, Maximizing Your Potential. These are books in my library collection. My husband said that I was a, uh, by trade and training, have a master's in library science. I love books, I love reading. So even if I didn't have the degree, I would be a librarian. And I'm constantly trying to read to get better. Amen? And nothing's more important, though, than reading the Word of God. Let me clarify that. Amen? And so I think about purpose, and my husband spoke about um, my working at the W.E. Du Bois Learning Center at age 16. And I remember being in high school, looking for just something to do, work, so I could have my own money. Y'all know how that goes? Young people, I want my own money. Okay, I don't have to ask my parents for I need this and that, you know? So I wanted my own money. So I had to go find a J-O-B. And the first job was actually at age 14, working at Worlds of Fun, and I knew that was not my purpose. Okay, and I knew quick, this is not it, but I'm gonna do what I need to do. But by 16, when I was working at the W.E.B. Du Bois Learning Center with one of my best friends at the time, Joy, we were reading tutors, working with kids that were struggling to read and do math, and I found purpose in that. I only made $16 per session, which equated to $8 an hour, and we worked four hours a week. But that was my money. I worked for that. That was going to the movie money, okay? Going to the bowling alley money. Going to the skating rink money. That was my money, okay? But I found purpose in that. I remember Naomi Burkett, who, who passed away. She was um, uh, the Sunday school superintendent at the church where I was raised, St. Andrew United Methodist Church. And I remember her saying, she called me Andre. My name is Andrea. It's Andre, I want you to teach a Sunday school class. I don't want to do that. But there was something about that call, and then I knew I had to give a response, yes, ma'am. And that call and response ushered me into my purpose. And I knew in that moment, I like to teach. I think this is what I'm called to do, to reach others and help lift them up and empower them and give them the, teal, the, the tools and the, the skill set that they need so they can go and do something better for themselves and other people. So all of that at that time was calling me into my purpose. And even when I went to the university, I had the nerve to say, I'm going to declare that my field of study is going to be psychology. God flipped the script on me. I got a D in psychology class. Uh, that's not my purpose. Okay? You better figure it out quick, because if you don't, it's going to cost you some money. Okay? All right. Purpose. That's the second essential component. Let's move on to the third one. I only got one more to go, and I'm going to take my seat. Plan. Say that word with me. Plan. Okay? You've got to have a plan. Amen? And planning is simply about making the necessary preparations. So I have a scripture for you on that. Proverbs 16 and 1. The preparations of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. In other words, you can make your plans, and it's good to do that, but God will have the final say. Okay, your planning is about setting goals, putting some action steps with that goal, those goals. Here's what I'm thinking about doing. Here are some things I think I can do to make that happen. But God does have the final say. All right, here's another one. A man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. Proverbs 16 and 9. Anytime you don't know what to do or where to go, go to Proverbs. It's full of wisdom. Here's another one for those of you that think I might want to start a business someday. And I believe we've got entrepreneurs in this group, okay? But you got a plan. The word reads in Proverbs 24, 3 and 4 in the living paraphrase. Remember, this is my great Aunt Ruth talking to me now. An enterprise is built by wise planning, becomes strong through common sense, and profits wonderfully by keeping abreast of the facts. So you've got to have a plan. And if you want a plan that's going to work, you got to get a Holy Ghost download. And the way you get that is you got to just, just ask. Ask, seek, knock. Understand your purpose 
and whatever God gives you, write the vision and make it plain so that those that can come alongside you and help with it, they can see it and know what they can do to help. All right? That wasn't even in my notes. Preparations include. Now, this is speaking to the general audience here because we have undergone preparation. We've gotten to this milestone. We're celebrating the graduation, but our work isn't over yet. Really, we've only just begun. But for the rest of us, preparations can include going back to school and getting that GED. I remember the pastor speaking about finish what you start. Remember that prophetic word, pastor, at the end of 2019? Finish what you start. It's never too late. I want to encourage you today, if you didn't get that done, go back and do it. Do like Nike says, just do it, all right? Preparations, furthering your education. If you're going, your next step is a two-year degree at a community college, that is excellent. Go make it happen. If your next step is the four-year university, you're going to come out with your undergraduate degree. Make it happen. For those of us that are in the graduate school program and you're getting ready to go to the PhD, make it happen. Okay, that's preparation. Developing a business plan. For those of you that are thinking, I really don't think I want to further my education, but I think I have a business idea. Okay, do your, re your research, do your due diligence, write the plan, write the vision, make it plain, amen? Research scholarships, fellowships, internships. Um, let me back up for just a moment. When I was going to undergrad school at Clark Atlanta University, so I thought, my mother said, mm-mm, mm-mm. I remember saying, mother, I'm gonna go to Clark Atlanta for, for undergrad. I'm going with my best friend. We, we, go, we gonna do it. My mother said, mm -mm. no. You also got accepted at UMKC, so I'm gonna need you to just stay grounded, okay? I told Mother Seahorn this story recently. And I thank God for that, that I had enough sense to, to be obedient, because in that moment in time, who knows what I could have gotten into, and I'm not knocking anybody that's going away to school. That is awesome. I did eventually get to go away. I went to Richmond, Virginia, okay, at 27. My parents were heartbroken, but I did it. But, but the, the, the plan that I had in mind was one thing, but God had another, right? And, and it didn't cost a lot of money because my parents were able to afford the tuition with me living at home, okay? Out-of-state tuition is no joke, okay? It's not. It is very expensive. So back then, tuition was $1,500 for the semester. Now at my level was $1,500 for a class, okay? All right? So I thank God that I had enough sense to go, okay, yes, ma'am, because when you honor your parents, it'll be well with you. You'll live a long, satisfying life, all right? And I was able to save some money, too. <clears throat> Pardon me. But as a result of that, when it was time for me to go to my master's program, God opened up a door. Ask, seek, knock. The door opened, and I received a fellowship. All expenses paid. Say it with me. All expenses paid. And they gave me money to spend a stipend, okay? So see, when you do things the right way, you will prosper and have good success, okay? Because a master's program will cost you even more money than an undergrad program, amen? That was not in my notes. Also in terms of preparation, scholarships, fellowships, internships, all of these things help you to get prepared. All of these things equip you with the tools that you need to go and make it happen at another level. Okay, studying for and obtaining a specialized credential or a license in something, another area of specialty. This is one of the easiest ways now in this 21st century that people are getting ahead in the uh, corporate culture. First Lady's nodding her head. They call them stackable credentials. Am I right? And a stackable credential is, for example, my husband is in the financial services industry. So I said, well, I think I want to get a license so I can go and do insurance and other things that are financially related. So I have what's a, what they call a licensed producer's license. I also have a credential in um, what they call a professional of HR certification. And guess what you have to do in both of those instances? Study to show yourself approved. 
In both of those instances, for the licensed producer, I went to a weekend class and then studied the material and then took the test. I think I passed it, I think I, yeah, I think I passed that one the first time. For the professional in HR, and our first lady can attest to this, that test is no joke. It is not for the faint of heart. Guess how many times I had to study for and take that test? Not one time, not two times, three times. Okay, it's not, it's not. And so what I'm trying to get you to see is this. You've got to have a plan to the plan to the plan. Because we're in an economy now where the bottom can fall out at any moment, at any time, and you better have a contingency plan. Okay, so while I've got a doctorate in education, and education is really my, my bed, bread and butter, I also know I'm an author. I also know I can go do this HR thing. I can call first lady, first lady, I need something in HR. What, what do you know? What's out there? Okay, and these stackable credentials then allow you to network and get in a better position financially for you and your family and your future. Amen? So I want you to hear me on that, stackable credentials. And that applies to not just the graduates, but any of us in this room. Amen? All right. Learning a new hobby is also a part of preparation because you never know where that hobby will lead. I saw this uh, little wise saying on a marquee. It said, follow your passion, it'll lead you to your purpose. And you stick with your purpose long enough, it'll bring you some profits. Amen? Amen. Bishop T.D. Jake said something many years ago that I've never forgotten. Downtime is prep time. Downtime is prep time. When it doesn't seem like anything's happening, that's when you can be submitting your job applications. That's when you can begin writing your business plan. That's when you can be a part of an internship and learning a new trade or a skill. Downtime is prep time. And then our last essential component, pathway. You gotta have a pathway that you're gonna take and that's about staying true to the God-ordained course he put before you. In other words, I thought I was gonna go to Clark Atlanta because my best friend was going. God said, no, you're gonna go local right here. This is the course I have for you. Okay, so we cannot get caught up in doing things that other people are doing. We've got to do what God has told and commissioned us to do. Amen. So Psalm 37, 23, 24 reads, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delights in his way. Here's hope. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholds him with his hand. In other words, God is saying to us in this word, I got your back. You get on the path I have for you, even if you fall, you stumble, you know, kind of get off track, I got your back, okay? Here's another one, one of my favorites, Psalm 119, 105. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And we get the word from the word of God that we should be asking seeking, knocking over, right? It's the word, and that word then lights the way for every step you take. Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. When I don't know where I'm going, and when I don't know what I'm doing, I go back to the word, amen? God and his word are one, amen? Here's another one, Isaiah 30, 21. Your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way. Walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left. In other words, he's got a spiritual GPS system built into his word. And all we have to do is be obedient. Amen? Even what seems like a setback, because sometimes things happen along the way, but even what seems like a setback can still be your setup for good success. And so that is all I have for you today. I want you to be encouraged with these four essential components so that you can have good success, and they are, you gotta pray, right? You've gotta know your purpose, you've gotta have a plan, and you've gotta follow the pathway that God has put before you. In Jesus' name, we, we pray, amen. To God be the glory.
To God be the glory for the things he has done. Amen. I believe at this time what we're going to do is we're going to have the graduates stand and come forward, Pastor. Okay. Have the graduates come forward. He's going to anoint you because we're being commissioned today to go and do greater works. And... Um, Okay, come forward. Yeah, come forward. Come on. This is your time to shine. Amen. Just, just come and stand along here. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for each and every graduate standing here today, Lord. We thank you, God, that you have a divine purpose in mind for each and every one of them. I pray, God, that you will order their steps, Lord, that you will lead them into all truth, Lord, that your righteousness will prevail in every situation, every circumstance that they face, oh God. Lord, I, I just thank you, Lord, for taking them from faith to faith and glory to glory in all that they do, Lord. I pray, God, that they won't forget you, Lord, that they will be in remembrance, that you are the one who has made all things possible for them to experience, oh God. This graduation day is important, Lord, but you have more work for us to do, God. And I pray, oh God, that each and every one of them will put their hand to the plow, oh God. Lord, that each and every one of them, oh God, will, will seek you first, oh God. That they will ask, that they'll seek, that they'll knock until the right door opens, Lord. They won't veer to the left or to the right, Lord, but they'll stay the course, God. Lord, that they'll know, more importantly, who they are in Christ Jesus, Lord. For you said that we're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, oh God. And I pray that everything they set their hands to, oh God, it will prosper. Whether it's a business endeavor, oh God. Whether it's continuing their education, Lord. Whether it's starting that new job opportunity, Lord. Whatever it is, God, I declare that no weapon formed against them shall be able to prosper. Every tongue that would rise up against them, oh God, they shall show to be in the wrong, oh God. Lord, we belong to you. Help us to never forget it, oh God. Lord, we will always give you praise. We will always give you glory. We will always give you honor. We will ever be mindful that if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would we be, oh God? We thank you, Lord, for all of the family members and friends, oh God, and loved ones that have supported us in this endeavor, oh God. And it's equally important, Lord, to acknowledge them, oh God, because their prayers, oh God, got us through. In some cases, their financial resources got us through, oh God. We thank you, Lord, their connections and networks, people that they knew who knew somebody else, oh God, that got us through, oh God. And so we just thank you, Lord, for leading and guiding and ordering our steps, oh God. And I end the prayer with my favorite scripture, that we will trust in the Lord with all of our heart. We'll lean not to our own understanding, but in all of our ways, God, we will acknowledge you and you will direct our plans, which means you'll make them smooth, plain, and straight. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen.